In this episode, I'll be consolidating information I gained from interviewing several other professionals about how to have happy horses. And you can find some of those interviews in previous episodes of this podcast. I'll be pulling together the common threads of what they said. I'll give you some exercises to do, and we'll go deeper into some of the important points. Now, what you're about to hear is a recording of a video that I made in two parts for students inside my video classroom. So you're going to hear me referring to it as a video. So I'm sorry if that's confusing, but it's important enough. I wanted to make sure you could find it here too. So here we go. Episode 99, Happy Horse, Common Threads. Hi, I'm Karen Rolfe. And welcome to Horse Training in Harmony. This podcast is about you making progress with your horse in a way that you both can love. It's about learning how to move and be in harmony. Because yes, you really can develop a horse to be both athletic and happy. When we show up as our best selves for our horses, our horses will show up for us. So... Let's get started. One of the main common threads through all the interviews is that we want a horse that wants to show up for us. We want to be the kind of person that the horse wants to be with, and we want a horse to be glad that he did show up for us when he does. Now, built into that is that we have to be able to give our horses the freedom to choose whether or not to be with us so that we really know. So the three main points are the art of self-mastery, to give the horses freedom and choice, and also to get really good at rewarding your horse and making him feel really happy that he put the effort in or that he did show up for you. All right, so how are we actually gonna do these things? So let's start with the self-mastery, the art of always being your best self. Now this is everybody's life's work. For me, I personally feel that horsemanship and personal development cannot be separated. They absolutely go together. And that's why in my Habits for Excellent Horsemanship course, I start in module one with going through nine habits that we all need to have. And I start with them because I believe that we can Um, change our mindset so that we have those at the beginning. We don't have to wait years to have these mindsets. In fact, we have to start them right away. The nine habits that I emphasize in the horsemanship course are things like partnership, clarity, to nurture curiosity, to have a reflex to relax, to use time and timing, to seek communication, even though you're able to control, to use feel, to use consistency and variety and know how to strategically use those and to have a sense of humor. So for your first piece of homework, I'd like to focus on the sense of humor part of this. And the idea is that horsemanship and life are lessons in lightness and you can get serious results without having to be so serious all the time. Anybody who's worked with me knows that I have a a couple little um, key phrases that I can use that will help combat frustration or self-criticism. For example, if I'm working on developing a half pass with my horse and it's just not going well, maybe I'm feeling really uncoordinated that day or my horse just has never done it and he's like, what? I don't know where to put my body parts. Um, Then instead of beating myself up or saying that the horse is a bad horse, I use a couple phrases. I'll say, well, that's an artist's rendition of half pass. (laughs) Or I might say, well, this is the movement soon to be known as half pass. And I've trained myself to use phrases like this because it sort of breaks the seriousness of it. it. It takes me out of that frustration pattern if I feel it coming. It takes the pressure off. Feel free to use those phrases if that resonates with you or find your own version. Something you can teach yourself to say in that moment that just changes the whole energy. If you can break that pattern of uh, frustration or self-criticism, then you open the door for things like curiosity. And if you're in curiosity mode, from there, 
you can solve problems so much easier. Now, of course, that's just one of the nine habits. So if you have some results with that one <laughs> and you'd like to practice the other eight, um, that's what I teach in the Habits for Excellent Horsemanship course. Okay, the next piece is about freedom and choice, right? So we say we want a horse to show up for us. How do we know? If we're always using methods of control, then we might not know. We might just have a very nice obliging horse, uh, but if given the chance, he'd rather be out of there. So here's a homework exercise that you can use around this. In the horsemanship course, I teach a game called um, permission, asking permission. And the idea is to use this with something that the horse already understands and he knows what it's all about. So for example, putting on your horse's halter. Uh, now there's lots of people who've practiced very um, um, polite habits with the halter that they come up and they softly ask the horse to yield their head towards you and then they put the halter on and that's a good start. But what I'd like you to do is not ask for that first yield. Your horse knows what a halter is by now. He knows it's going on his head. So when you play the game of permission, it looks like this. You walk up with a halter and you ask, you say, may I put your halter on <laughs> and see what the horse does, right? So things that could happen or your horse could go, hell no, I'm out of here, <laughs> right? That would be a, a big obvious <laughs> signal. Or he might just go uh, and turn a little bit away. Or he might kind of go, uh, but not turn away. Or he might go, sure, let me make this easy for you. So what I like you to do, you come up with a halter. May I put your halter on you? And if your horse does anything other than sure and puts his nose in there. So let's say you hold the halter up and your horse goes like this. Even if it's just a little bit, I want you to come back and go, oh, okay, not yet. How about now? And that's really about the timing of it. How about now? And if your horse goes, no, you go, oh, I'm sorry, not yet. Okay. How about now? And I found in most cases that if you just take those 20 seconds to wait and see by about the third or fourth time, the horse will go, may I put your halter on? And the horse goes, sure. And you'll see some indication of your horse making it easier for you to put the halter on. If it takes more than three to five asks and your horse is maybe even getting worse now, well, what a gift. It's because now you know that there's a place where your horse really is not comfortable showing up for you. So there's your homework. Find something very simple, something you absolutely know your horse understands. You know that he knows what's happening. Maybe it's when you get to um, put on the bridle or you're getting ready to mount him or anything like that. Give him a little more freedom, a little more choice and see what he says. Those 20 seconds that you take to do that could be the most important 20 seconds that you ever spend with your horse to improve your relationship. Now, of course, in the horsemanship course, I have videos of this showing, explaining that, demonstrating it. You can see what it looks like when the horse actually does it. And this is something I actually use a lot. So you see it woven in many of the exercises in the horsemanship course. Okay, the third exercise is built around the idea of rewarding your horse and um, using rewards, whether they're conditional or unconditional meaning a reward as a thank you for something you asked him to do and he did it, or just walking in the barn and going, hey, look who's here. I'm really fun to be around, like grandma with the freshly baked cookies coming out of the oven every time you visit her. So rewards are all about um, just making sure your horse is really happy to see you and making sure that he feels well paid for his efforts. And the thing to know with rewards is every horse is different. So it's really about knowing what your horse in particular likes, right? If you came to me with a bag of Skittles, it's not gonna motivate me that much, but a dozen chocolate croissants, even one chocolate croissants, yeah, 
I'll work for that. <laughs> so um, in the horsemanship course and in all my programs, I teach my students to get in the habit of asking your horse, like, how can I help you with this? And so part of that comes into play here of going, hey, how can I pay you for this? How can I thank you uh, for showing up for me? So your homework is to figure out what your particular horse likes, not just what do horses like, but what is your particular horse like? And I, I'm going to tempt you to make a list of 20 things, very specific things that your horse likes and that you can use to thank him. I just made my own list here, ways to thank my horse. And there's 48 things on this and it took me 15 minutes to knock this out. So I think 20 is fair enough. <laughs> when you have that, you're going to start realizing that um, it's important not just to have phases of how to use pressure, right? A lot of you probably have very sophisticated education in how to apply pressure in different phases and your energy, your seat, your leg, then maybe the spur, then how to use your stick. And I want to tempt you to have equal numbers of phases of things on the other end of the spectrum. Right? Because then you can have a sliding scale. You can have pretty good rewards for pretty good efforts and you can have amazing rewards for amazing efforts and your horses will understand the difference. Okay, well, that's, that's going to give you a really good start to creating a happier horse based on um, the things that all those top professionals um, spoke so eloquently about in their interviews. Uh, in reality, uh, there is a new problem that's going to come up which is when you start doing this and start looking at it this way, you're going to realize that there are so many decision points when you're with your horse. There's so many moments where you have different choices and to realize that every horse is different. So it's not even like I could give you a list of all these things, but it's about making those choices in those moments for your horse. And the reality is that when we're out there with our horses by ourselves, and these moments are coming by, sometimes doubt creeps in. And when there's doubt, there he there's hesitation. And then we miss these moments, right? They're gone. So in order to get really confident at this sort of thing and this way of thinking, I highly recommend going into the Habits for Excellent Horsemanship program. The whole point is it's designed around this. It's designed to infuse these nine habits right from the beginning. I, the whole first module is audio, so you can just literally, I'm whispering in your ear into your subconscious. So you right away become, um, become and adopt the habits that excellent horsemen have. The next phase of the course is we create a vision. So I show you some very simple things, but done in a totally different way that builds partnership. And no matter what other kind of riding you're doing or what program you're in, you don't have to stop that. I purposely uh, based all the exercises in this program around very simple things that you're already doing that most people don't pay as much attention to as they should. Catching, feeding, leading, haltering, mounting, tacking, basic online exercise, basic things riding. And now some of you might have just thought the five most dangerous words in uh, horsemanship. Oh, that's too basic for me. Or maybe you're thinking the three words that are dangerous, which is like, oh, I'm beyond that. <laughs> so this is the biggest mistake people make is that they leave their basics behind. Now it's not called foundation for nothing. The bigger and the more solid the foundation, the taller a building you can build on it. And it's never too late to improve the basics. Okay, so now let's hear part two, where I go deeper into some of the concepts. Now you're going to hear me refer to the first video. That first part of the podcast you just listened to was the audio of that first video. You'll also hear me refer to a video in the classroom that I've done with my horse, Teo. That video can be found in the July 2020 videos. Okay, here we go. The most common response when I asked the question, how do you know if your horse is happy, was that your horse shows up for you. 
So when I talk to the other professionals further and ask them, what do you need to do to have your horse want to show up? There were three common threads that showed up. The first common thread was an idea about self-mastery, that you need to arrive to your horse with the energy that would make your horse want to be with you. So feeling that spirit of partnership, feeling in a, in a non-predatory state, feeling that love and connection or whatever you want your horses to feel, that you were able to embody it and project it. The other common thread was around this idea of freedom and choice. So everybody talked about this in some way, that your horses have more release, more freedom, um, and the opportunity to offer, to choose to offer, to do what you've asked of them. The third common thread was around this idea of rewarding, or it's not an idea, the practice of rewarding your horse and doing things that cause your horse to feel really happy <laughs> that he did um, something for you and that he felt well paid for and that he was, you know, felt a sense of pride in what he's doing. In the other video, um, I explained three exercises to do. So first looking at the idea of self-mastery, I shared some uh, little sayings, little quotes that I use with myself when I feel frustration coming on. And I, I think frustration and self-doubt uh, and self-criticism are probably the top three things that get us out of our own, out of our best state. So I offered some things that like, say you're playing with your horse and you're trying to do something and you feel yourself getting frustrated or feeling, oh, I'm not doing it right. Um, you can say things like, well, this is the movement soon to be known as leg yield <laughs> or, oh, I'm doing an artist re artist's rendition of my stretchy circle. You know, so a little quote like that for me just changes my attitude and helps me take things a little bit more lightly. This practice of self-mastery is, um, it's so much more than I can talk about right here, but I just want you to know that it, it is a practice. And I think this is something that all humans should put a big focus on. I think, you know, look at my desk. <laughs> I didn't put these books here just for your sake. These are the books that live on my desk. It's about, you know, Daring Greatly, The Surrender Project, Awake the Giant Within. Um, these are all books that I like to just pick up. I've read them and I like to just pick up and read a random page from and help keep me back on track. So I think it's really good to know what are the resources, what are the videos, what are the books that have um, affected you or that you felt like made a change inside you and helped you have a tool to be your best self. And this is what I do. I, I keep them here where I can see them and um, refresh my memory. Uh, I have this, this little guy. This is what I call a brain gremlin. The, the people in my professionals mastermind know all about the brain gremlin. Uh, the brain gremlin is the little voice that goes in your head and goes, you suck at this. <laughs> And I go, thank you, Mr. Gremlin, for that uh, unsolicited opinion, but um, I'm not listening to you right now. So those little thoughts that creep in our head and kind of whisper in our ear and, and take us out of our best self, I like to uh, have a little uh, symbol for them so I can embody it. And I go, yes, I see you and I'm putting you over here and I'm not listening to you right now. <laughs> I just want to share that so that you guys know that this isn't just oh, look at Karen, she's so joyful when she rides. I, I gotta work on this. And I can talk about it because I'm not always so good at it. Dana's probably over there nodding his head. <laughs> I'm just much better at it with horses than things like computers and numbers and drawing straight lines and stuff and organizing things and filing things. 
you know, so I have my areas of where I get frustrated and it's an ongoing practice. And I think it's really important to know about that. There are some other resources within dressage naturally inside the classroom. Um, there's a, two videos with a guest presenter, Michelle Eisenberg, and she uh, speaks directly to how to handle frustrations. There's also some videos that are built around yoga. Uh, we have a whole yoga course offered in the virtual arena. This is by design. Why did I put a yoga course in? Because I know that yoga has great skills for being your best self. Um, so find your resources, actively seek out every time you're frustrated, every time you're feeling bad about yourself, um, find a way to turn that around. <laughs> and if you can't do it for yourself, do it for your horses. The homework around the freedom and choice piece was an exercise uh, that I talked about called permission. And I go into this um, exercise, I really teach it in the horsemanship course. On the other video, I describe what I mean by that by giving the example of holding up the halter and saying, may I put your halter on? And seeing if your horse either moves away, tolerates, or says, sure, and helps you make it easier. What I wanted to expand on that is, is a little bit more because it gets tricky. The timing of when to use permission can get tricky. And there's actually an example in one of the videos from this month when I'm riding Teo. And you can see an example of me using the permission game, even though I'm not calling it that, when I'm riding Teo and I say, ready? And sometimes when I say ready, he trots off and sometimes he doesn't. <laughs> sometimes I, when he doesn't, sometimes I just go, okay, how about now? Ready? And I give him a second. So that's the permission game. I just ask him, I do, I suggest, I'm thinking about trotting and I suggest ready. Same thing as I hold the halter out and sometimes he just trots right into it. When he doesn't, there's, um, there's two ways I deal with it. Sometimes I just wait a second, like the permission game. And sometimes you'll see me going, oh, gotta move something, gotta move something. Right, so this is the art of when do we play the permission game and when don't we? And I do not have the answer to it, but I can just explain a little bit more how I'm making that decision in that moment with Teo. So if he's, um, if he's really stuck and I say, are you ready? And he not only doesn't go, but he does the opposite of going. And then if I make a little more of a suggestion and he stays stuck, here's a moment where um, I could be out of control, right? So I'm on a horse who's actively not listening, actively doing the opposite of what I'm asking. And if that went more, <laughs> if we added energy to that trajectory, I'm in a potentially unsafe situation because I not only can't get my horse to do what I want, but when I ask, he does the opposite. So that to me, safety first, that to me flips it a little bit and I say, I need to have something working. So in a way, I'm not saying, haha, too bad, you have to go, but I'm saying you have to do something. So I, I switch gears and I ask for something one notch more basic than going. I say, just move, move some legs. I say, you gotta move something. You'll hear me saying, you gotta move something. So I switch to more of a yield more of a basic yield. And I say, you got to just do this. I'm not going to force you to go, but you need to do something. And then once he starts following me in that suggestion, you'll see me pause and then go ready and see if he'll trot off. So that is, I talk about it in the video, but I wanted to connect it back here to the permission game because I don't think I use the word permission in that video. So when you, when you watch that video, there's a lots of things you can watch for, but I want you to go back and watch that video in that moment and relate it to what I'm talking here about permission. Um, again, there's, there's no rule with this and I might do this completely differently with a different horse in a different situation. So this is up to you to figure out what are your rules? <laughs> what are you okay with waiting for permission for? And what do you feel like, uh Oh, I need to do something. But notice that I didn't 
in this case with him, I didn't push through the exact thing I was asking permission for. To relate what I did with Teo riding to the halter exercise, if I asked for permission for the halter and he went, no, 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 I can't, I'll draw back and ask again. But if he went, no, I can't, and I'm gonna run you over and leave, I might say, okay, there's some rules. You can't run me over. I don't want you to leave. You have to stay here. Now that we're in the vicinity of communication together, now I'll present the halter again. So that's what I did with Teo. I was like, you can't be running backwards. You can't be stuck. Okay, thank you. We've resolved that. Now, would you like to trot? Are you ready? Okay, I think, I hope that helps. It's such a subtle thing, but you guys, I know you guys are into the subtle, interesting conversations. So I wanted to share that piece with you. Okay, the last piece was about rewards. And in that Common Threads video, list of things to reward your horse with, it's about, well, number one, it's about your horse and your horse might be completely different than my horse. But it's also that I want you to go through the process of trying to come up with ideas. What is that phrase? A good teacher doesn't give you the answer, but they show you where to look. So I, where I'm telling you to look is there's something in the rewards department. What does your horse like? What does he enjoy? So hit pause, go write down your best attempt, and then come back here and listen to the rest of this video. Let's continue. So in that Common Threads video, I kind of waved around this graph. <laughs> And I didn't, I, I on purpose didn't let anybody see what was on the, on this chart uh, or this list of things because I wanted people to go attempt it on their own. But for you guys, I'm going to show you this. I'm actually going to give it to you. So you should see a, um, a link to a PDF in the show notes and you can actually download this and take a look at it. There's now 61 things on this list. So 20 shouldn't be hard. And what it has is, you know, ways to thank my horse. And I thought of some key categories. So um, key categories would be tricks that my horse loves. Like some of my horses love some of the tricks they do so much, they come up and they use it to like, they use the trick almost like it's a cue to give me, for me to give them a cookie. They love them. Uh, I have a category of things, like things my horses like. Um, they might like if I threw a big cardboard box or something in their pasture because that's like really fun to rip up. It might be um, Ovation likes a squeaky toy. <laughs> you know, they might like to kick the ball around. Uh, so that's things, that's things in the things category. I have a category of rest and release. So there's different versions of rest and release. We could just stop riding for a second and stand still. I could stand still um, for less than a minute. I could stand still for more than a minute. I could stand still the, until the heart rate decreases. I could dismount. I could stand still with a long rein or a short rein. Oh, I didn't even put those on there. I'll have to write those down. <laughs> I could, um, if I have a horse online or at Liberty, I could stand still with them. I could stand, oh, I'm thinking of even more that's not even written. I could stand still with them. I could stand still 10 feet away. I could stand still outside of the arena, right? So those are all very different experiences for my horse. I'll have to add those later. Um, another, de another department, another category was touch, all right? So there's grooming. I could get the curry comb out. Some horses love that, uh, a shower. Solana loves her bath time. She will come in and kick another horse out of the shower because she wants a shower. Um, I could scratch their itchy spots and I listed different areas. Uh, so for your individual horse, some horses don't like their face rubbed. Some horses love their face rubbed. Uh, so there's all the different areas that your horse might like to be rubbed. I have in the touch category, I have massage. I could do trigger points. You know, somewhere I was doing that with Atomic the other day, and he he doesn't necessarily always like light stuff, 
but sometimes he like pushes in and then he does these big releases. Other horses don't like that. I have moving massage. I have a thing called flow where you just, it's a flotrition and it's a technique where you just find spots um, where you can connect with them. I have gentle massage. I have massage with liniment. I have red light photonic therapy. I have another category of movement. So that could be um, in the middle of a session, I let the horse just wander where he wants. I'll often do that and I'm in my dressage arena. There's no walls around it. I'll just go done, go where you want. And that's part of my reward. I can take the tack off and, and just hand walk them. I could head out on a trail ride and that could be a, to end a session or it could just be on a reward day, right? Tuesday was really good. Wednesday, we go on a trail ride. I could go for a gallop. That's really fun for some horses, for other horses not. I could free walk in hand. I could free walk riding. I could free walk within the arena. I could go for a walk outside the arena. I could go across the street to my neighbor's house. That's an adventure for some of my horses love that. Other horses are like, oh, it's too far. <laughs> um, I can take the tack off and let them roll. I can take the tack off and let them wander. I could let, you know, so those are all in the movement department. And then the last category I came up with was food. I have grazing. I have grazing on Spanish moss. I have grazing on the mulberry leaves. When those are out, my horses love the mulberry leaves. Some horses really love the Spanish moss. There's clover patches, there's grass, there's uh, Spanish needles. It's a weed, my horses love that. Um, and then I have different treats. So I listed all the different kinds of treats that I give my horses. Uh, they have different values. So you can also organize these on the list of what do your horses like go crazy for and what are they just like, yeah, you know, like the Buckeye low sugar treats. My horses are like, thanks for the dollar, mom. <laughs> you know? But the special treats, which is the Cool Stance coconut mixed with the alfalfa pellets, like that's, they go crazy for that. And I can give the snake, I can give their special treats uh, at the end of the ride back in the barn, or sometimes I have uh, my assistant bring them out and hide them by the arena so I can surprise them with them by the arena. Um, I also, oh, I also have the category of voice, right? So some horses you can reward them with, you know, if you train, good as a bridge, right? It's a, it's a bridge marker that says, ooh, the word good means you're gonna get a treat. The word good can become a reward. I can do quiet breathing. Gosh, my horse Monty used to love that. At the end of a session, he would actually do this amazing, I call it his Buddha breathing. He'd just breathe really slow and I'd go get on the ground and I'd breathe with him. Ovation loves excited praise. He's half dog, right? He's like, good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy. You know, and I, I get my excited voice and he loves it. Atomic, not so much. So there's soft praise. You know, Natia loves like, oh, you're so good. Oh, you know, so there's all these different choices of how we can be. And I'm sure we all do combinations of these. But I find that without thinking about all the choices, we probably tend to do things a certain way. Like we always give a certain treat and a certain pat and a certain voice that we use with them. And maybe it's working or maybe you can try differently. Maybe you haven't thought about it. So uh, this is your homework experiment. I got 61 and I just in talking to you off the top of my head, I probably came out with about eight more that I need to write down on here. Uh, so take your time to do that. The real gold is in the noticing what does your horse like? And if you give them the freedom and choice to show you what, where they like to graze, where they want to be scratched, um, you can learn so much and, and it's so powerful to have a reward system that makes them really happy that they did what they, what you asked them. <laughs> <laughs>